You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. We win in Christ. So I want to welcome you to our leadership edition. Yes, I'm Mike Moore, and I'm so excited about the opportunity that you've given me to take you on a leadership journey You see, leadership development is not an event, nor is it a destination. It is a journey. And I want to inspire you on this journey. I want to equip you on this journey. And here's what I need you to do. I want you to think about your arena of leadership, whether it be in the home or your student leader, whether it's work or business, education, whether it's military, ministry, whether it's in the community, church, government, politics. I want you to think about leadership in the context of you as a leader and take these principles, and these principles are based off a Bible worldview, a biblical perspective. And we're teaching. I began a series some time ago entitled Leading Yourself. Our background text is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. The first step in leading others is to lead yourself. Now, this series has four parts, and we're in the second part, and we're talking about personal integrity. Personal integrity, and this is our second lesson. In lesson one, we talked about what is integrity. In this lesson, my subtopic is honesty matters. Come on, say that. Honesty matters. I'm going to give you a background scenario, illustration, story about a man who lost his stewardship, his leadership stewardship because of a lack of integrity. His name was Gehazi. He was the servant of a powerful leader named Elisha. Now, Elisha had healed a man, a general. He was a a, a Syrian, and he was a general. He was a great man, but he had leprosy. And this leader was instructed to go to Elijah and that Elijah would bring healing to him. Elijah heard the word of the Lord, told him to go dip seven times in the Jordan. He went and dipped seven times in the Jordan and his leprosy disappeared. Now, naturally, he wanted to sow back into the life of, uh, he wanted to share his financial uh, resources with Elisha. And Elijah said, no, I, I don't want anything. He, he refused to take the finances for the ministry that he had done. Now, it's nothing wrong with leaders uh, receiving finances. If you're a business leader, you need revenue. If you're a ministry leader, you need income in order to to take the vision forward and to uh, pay for staff and all these different things. Nothing wrong with having products that people buy. Nothing wrong with that. But what he was doing, he was, uh, the man wanted him to pay. He wanted to pay for the healing he got. And Elijah said, no, no, his integrity wouldn't allow him to do that. He understood that it was the anointing that healed that man and not him. Now, his servant, though, Gehazi, came up with a scheme to get money from this man. Now, follow the story. I'm going to read 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20 through 25 in the New Living Translation. We're talking about honest in matters. But Gehazi, now this is after Elisha, his master, the one he was following, turned down material blessings or resources that 
the uh, Naaman wanted to give him. But his servant, Gehazi, was sitting there listening to the whole affair. So it says, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, my master should have let, should not have let this Aramean get away without accepting any of his gifts. As surely as the Lord lives, I will chase after him and get something from him. Now, this is the scheme that Gehazi came up with. So Gehazi set off after Naaman. When Naaman saw Gehazi running after him, he climbed down from his chariot, went to meet him. Is in it? Is everything all right? Naaman asked. Yes, Gehazi said, but my master has sent me. Oh, we got a scheme going, a con going now, a lie going forth now. My master sent me to tell you that two young prophets from the hill country of Ephraim have just arrived. He would like 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing to give to them. By all means, now listen to that name, by all means, he was so thankful for his healing. He said, by all means, take twice as much silver, Naaman insisted. He gave him two sets of clothing, tied up the money in two bags, and sent two of his servants to carry the gifts for Gehazi. But when they arrived, now notice Naaman sent his servants to carry the money, so Gehazi, it was too much for him to carry alone. But when they arrived at the citadel, Gehazi took the gifts from the servants and sent the men back. Then he went and hid the gifts inside of his house. Now watch this. When he went in to his master, Elisha, Elisha asked him, where have you been, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, I haven't been anywhere. He replied, let's stop right there. He lied. He was discovered by Elisha. He ended up living a life of leprosy. And as far as we know, he died a leper. Okay, that was a tragedy. But we're talking about the fact that honesty matters. So let's define our terms. We always want to define our terms, and then we want to apply it to our leadership. So what is honesty? Honesty is choosing not to lie even when it is expedient. Choosing not to lie even when it seems like the more comfortable way, the less expensive way will be to lie. So what is honesty? It's choosing not to lie even when it's expedient. It is refusing to cheat even when others are doing it. It is avoiding manipulation even when you have the position and the power to do it. So we said first is choosing not to lie. So what is a lie? Let's get some definitions in this. I know you know what lying is, but let's talk about it. What is a lie? A lie is a false statement, misrepresentation, misleading appearance or action. What is a lie? A lie is a false statement, a misrepresentation, a misleading appearance or action. So let's talk about kinds of lies. I know you know this, but I want to talk about it anyway. Kinds of lies. There's a premeditated lie where you make plans ahead of time to deceive. That's exactly what Gehazi did. Then there's a hypocrisy form of lie, lying that's acting different than what you say. Gehazi fell in that category too. And then there's the silence kind of lie, not saying or giving information that should be given. There's exaggeration lie. That's where you embellish the facts 
And then there's the exaggeration, there's the exaggeration lie, pardon me, where you embellish the facts, and then there's the denial. Denial is refusal to admit the truth of something unpleasant or uncomfortable. As you can see from the reading of the story, that Gehazi lied in several ways. He was the servant of Elijah, but his was a leadership position because people looked up to Gehazi because of his close connection and his position with and alongside of Elisha. So Gehazi lied in several ways. This honesty, what is honesty? It's not cheating. It's not cheating. So what is cheating? Cheating is breaking a rule or law. Cheating is stealing. Cheating is gaining advantage in an unfair way. Cheating is breaking a rule or a law. Cheating is stealing, gaining advantage in an unfair way. Now, right away, we can see that Gehazi cheated. He stole from Naaman. He stole. He took advantage of Naaman in an unfair way because he said, my master sent me. So let's talk about kinds of cheating. I know you know this, but let's talk about it anyway. Let's talk about kinds of cheating. There's relationship cheating, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into this. Relationship cheating where physical or sexual intimacy with someone else's spouse or with someone outside of your marriage. There's relationship cheating. Then there's financial cheating. That's in acquiring management or disbursement of resources. Financial cheating. For example, a failure to pay income tax is a form of financial cheating. And then there's cheating in leadership. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about leadership. It's possible to be a leader and cheat your followers and cheat people. For example, solving a subordinate's problems, cheat them of the competence and confidence that comes from solving their own problems. Now, that could be true of a parent Leadership in the home, not allowing others to solve problems. When you solve folk under you problem, you solve all their problems. Some parents, they want to solve every problem that the child has. You rob them of the confidence and the competence of learning how to solve problems. Micromanagement is a form of cheating. In micromanagement, you cheat subordinates of motivation because if you are handling everything, they're not going to be motivated. You cheat them of creativity because if you have your hands in everything that the subordinate is doing, you're cheating them of using their own brains their own creativity. You're cheating them of using their own mind and their knowledge. Not giving, talking about leadership, not giving timely and honest feedback. I know these are ways we overlook, but when you don't give your followers or subordinates or whoever's under you, when you don't give them timely, and honest feedback, you are cheating them. You cheat poor performers of their own reality. You cheat them of the coaching that they that could lead them to improve performance. 
and you also see excellent performance of needed affirmation and rightful rewards. You see, when when you're not given feedback, and, and really when you 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 just she, just rewarded everybody on the team, you got some good performers, some perfor- poor performers, and when you just rewarded everybody, then you are cheating the poor performance of their own reality. They need to know their own reality. You're cheating them of the coaching that may lead to improved performance. But when you were rewarding everybody, you got poor performance and you were rewarding them and then you got outstanding performance and they get basically the same thing. You're cheating them of affirmation. You're cheating them of rightful rewards. And not only that, you demotivate them because they begin to think if we're going to all get rewarded, why should I spend all this time? And they are not even carrying their weight. You can cheat. As a leader in not delegating, you cheat subordinates of the opportunity to grow when you don't delegate. You cheat them of of their their desire and, and their will to make a contribution to the team. You cheat them of using their talents and their abilities and gaining experience and expertise. You cheat in them when you don't delegate leaders. I bet you hadn't thought about it like that. Let's talk about manipulation because we're asking the question. We're we're dealing with the fact that honesty matters. Honesty matters. And to be honest is to not lie. To be honest is to not cheat. And to be honest is not to manipulate. Not no manipulation. There's a lot of manipulation that goes on uh, amongst leaders. So let's talk about manipulation. We know that Gehazi lied. We know that he cheated. But he also manipulated Naaman. He manipulated and he used his position in a way that he shouldn't have used his position. Now watch this. What is manipulation? Manipulation is twisting words, playing on emotions, and managing situations in a sneaky fashion to get what one wants. I I remember uh, when I pastored. Sometimes people would call and they wanted to get in touch with me or they wanted something and they would say how they knew me growing up. You know, I know him and and they would sound like we had this close relationship that we were like, but it's close together. And, and technically, whether it was conscious or unconscious, that was really a form of manipulation because some of those individuals might have been close friends, but some of them were not close friends. In fact, I didn't even know some of the people, but we were close growing up. I didn't even know who they were talking about. Manipulation, we got to get that out of leadership, is twisting words. Twisting words. Playing on emotions. That's what Gehazi did. He he twisted words. He said, my master sent me because he knew how much Naaman uh, felt indebted to Elisha. My master sent me. My master sent me. Manipulation is playing on emotions. He knew how uh, Naaman was going to feel. He knew that he was going to be ready to give. Twisting words, playing on emotions, managing situations in a sneaky fashion to get what one wants. And it was very sneaky because Naaman 
said, listen, I'll give you twice as much as you, your master wants. Well, the master hadn't asked for anything. That was Gehazi. I'll give you twice as much. I'll give you twice as much. I'll give you twice as much. And then he gave Gehazi so much, so many gifts, he couldn't care at all. So he sent two of his uh, servants to carry all the stuff. Now watch this. When they got to his house, he said, I'll take it from here. Gehazi said, I'll take it from him and sent them back home. And then he hid it. He hid everything that he had, had cheated and lied and manipulated to get, and he hid it in his tents. Manipulation. Manipulation, number two, is using one's position or influence to accomplish one's agenda with no regard for the benefit or loss of others. Now watch this. It's using your position or influence. Sometimes we tell people we know certain people that we didn't know. We tell people that we were connected with them in a certain way. We were not connected with them. But we know that using that name or that association helps us, and that's a form of manipulation. It's using one's position or influence to accomplish one's agenda with no regard for the benefit or loss of others. Gehazi had a position and he used that position. He manipulated Naaman. He used that position to carry out his agenda with no regard for Naaman, no regard for uh, Elisha. Just selfishness. He took his position for a selfish purpose, and his death was selfish. That's why he hid it. Now, follow me. Sometimes leaders throw subordinates under the bus. That's a form of manipulation. That's, that's the reason. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. I, I love sports. Uh, we're, we're, we're in the season uh, where we're headed up to the Super Bowl. So all the other teams now, except two, are through for the season. So now you have all the coaching changes and you have all the different things going on, the free agency and all these things. And sometimes the leaders and the coaches will throw all their subordinates out of the bus, throw them under the bus. And sometimes we don't assume the responsibility that we should, so we just throw our leaders under the bus, our leaders under the bus. Now, in my remaining minutes, we said that honesty matters. To be honest is not to lie, not to cheat, and not to manipulate. So why is honesty important? Why is it important? I know you knew all these definitions. You knew what a lie was. You knew what cheating, you know what it is. You no doubt know what manipulation is. So why is it important for us to talk about it? Well, number one, number one, honesty builds trust. Trust is the glue to any successful endeavor. Trust is the glue. If it's a spiritual endeavor, prayer is the glue. If it's a, 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 a regular relational endeavor, it, it, when it's groups coming together, and that's what really leadership is leading people, developing people to accomplish great things, but trust is the glue. It's honesty that creates trust. You cannot trust somebody that's not honest. As a pastor, I would counsel people, and sometimes they were guilty of infidelity in their marriage, and God could work it out. And I've seen God bring couples together, even after one or both had been unfaithful in their marriages. But they had to develop a level 
of consistency in being truthful. People won't trust you if you're lying. People won't trust you if you're cheating. They won't trust you if you're manipulating situations in them. They're not going to trust you. And if you don't have trust, you're not going to have fellowship. You're not going to have success. People need to trust the leader. They need to trust that what you say is the truth. They need to trust that you're not going to take advantage of them. They need to trust that you're not going to manipulate them for your own well-being. They need to trust. It's the glue. Why is it so important? Why is honesty so important? Because honesty matters. It really does matter. Now, listen at this. It is lying, cheating, and manipulation that has caused the high level of cynicism and skepticism of all leaders. Why is it important? Because it is the lying and the cheating and the manipulation that has caused the high level, the, the high levels of cynicism and skepticism. And think about it. For the most part, for the most part, people are very distrusting of leadership. Because we've been dishonest in our homes, dishonest in business, dishonest in government, politicians are dishonest, fathers are dishonest, mothers are dishonest, parents are dishonest. So much lying, so much cheating, so much manipulation. And unfortunately, and I've been in the church world for 40 some years, there's a lot of dishonesty in church and in church leadership. In church. And that's, <coughs> that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate. It is dishonesty. People don't trust leaders. Cross the board. They, they don't trust preachers. They don't trust politicians. They, they don't trust business people. Why? Because of the high level of dishonesty. And that's unfortunate. Now, I want to close by sharing with you one of the saddest things in the Old Testament. Now, Judas, I don't know if you can think of a sadder story of the lack of integrity and how de destructive it is than Judas in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, I think Gehazi, now you could talk about Saul, the first king of Israel, but Gehazi, to me, is one of the saddest stories of how a lack of integrity can destroy an individual. Not only did he die, possibly die a leper, but listen at this. It is conceivable that God's plan for Gehazi was that he, Gehazi, be the heir of the prophetic call of Elisha. Here's what I'm saying. Elijah, Elisha, follow prof the prophetic call of Elijah. Elijah, Elisha. Elijah, Elijah was the lead prophet. Elisha was his servant. The Bible says that Elisha poured water on Elijah's hands. In other words, he served him. Some people say he served him for nearly 20 years. Then Elisha assumed the mantle, became the prophet, the now prophet of his day, did twice as many miracles as Elijah. It is, now we got Elisha and Gehazi. I'm saying it is conceivable that God's plan for Gehazi 
that when Elisha moved off the scene, Gehazi would take his place and we would be reading about this great prophet, Gehazi. And yet, he never, never fulfilled the purpose and plan God had for his life because he was dishonest. Honesty matters. Integrity creates longevity in our leadership stewardship. I hope you've been blessed by this. I'm out of time. But I believe God is taking us on a great leadership journey. And I thank you for taking this journey with me. God bless you. Pray that you have a great rest of the week.